Hi, everyone. There seems to be a lot of confusion about how to uh, manipulate the data and analyze it in Excel. So um, I made a fake data set in Excel, so it does not look perfect. Um, but I'm going to show you how to analyze your data. OK, so here is my um, made up data, but it has all the parts that you need. So when you're looking at the um, freezing of a solution or even of the pure solvent, um, there are two portions of the graph. So first you have the portion where the liquid is being cooled. So that's going to be a fairly um, rapid cooling and it's going to slope downward. And then um, all of the data sets that you guys were given had a, a period of super cooling. So that's where it gets below the freezing point and then um, solidifies very rapidly. And then freezing of a solution is going to have a downward slope. Um, whereas the freezing point of your pure solvent is isothermal. So it's going to happen um, along a flat line, along one temperature. Um, either way, you would analyze it in the same way. So the issue here is that we don't want an overall trend line. Like if we were to add a trend line to this right now, what we would see is just a line showing us um, that overall our temperature goes down, which we already know. What we want instead is to figure out at what temperature um, did this solution start to freeze. So we want to get rid of that trend line. Now the solution's freezing point should be somewhere in this area, but it's not going to be along our graph because we have this super cooling, um, it's very curved, it should be a very specific point. So um, we're going to have to get kind of creative. We're going to have to um, do two different series of data. And first we need to figure out, you know, what those series are going to be. So we want to select a portion of the data um, in each of the curves that is linear. Um, so we don't want to involve any of this curved stuff and we don't want to involve this down here. This further cooling here is cooling of the solid um, or at least an approximation of it. That would, it would look very different in real life, I think. Um, but we want to select a linear portion. So something around here looks pretty linear. And then this um, looks pretty linear as well. So I want to select those two regions. So I'm going to pick, um, let's see, it looks like I want to go until maybe before 20 seconds or up to 20 seconds. It looked fairly linear through there. Um, and then I'm going to, um, whoops, why did I do it this way? Sorry. That's not the way I wanted to do it. Um, I want to click this funnel thing here and then select data. And I want to add a series. Um, I'm going to call this cooling, because why not? And uh, I'm going to pick 2 through 20 as my x values. And then for my y values, I need to delete that. And then I'm going to pick the corresponding y values. So now you see that I have um, a new series that's only along the linear looking portion of the line. So that is my cooling curve. And then I want to add another one for my freezing curve. Um, the region of like 60 to a little bit before 100 looks pretty good. So in, in these situations, it's not really like more data does not necessarily mean better data. Um, so I would stick to picking a smaller region that I am certain is fairly linear. Um, well, I can't remember if I went to 96 or 92, but we'll find out. Oh yeah, A38, B38, we're good. Okay, so there you go. Oh, that's a gross color, but anyway, so the portion in gray is my freezing curve. Okay, so now I've chosen my two different regions of the graph. Um, so I can add in some trend lines. I'm going to select my cooling curve, series two, and the little plus sign is not coming up. So I'm gonna add chart element. And I want to add a trend line, linear. 
And notice that the trend line um, is only going through the orange data, which is fine, but I also want to extrapolate it. So I'm gonna format trend line. Um, there's this thing down here that says uh, forecast. So I'm gonna tell it to forecast forward. Um, I'm gonna have it go through um, up to 60 seconds. So I'm gonna add 40. Okay, that was excessive. Um, I'm gonna add 20. Okay, and uh, now I wanna create a trend line for uh, my other series, my freezing series. And so same thing, it's just um, through the gray dots, it kind of looks like nothing's happening. And I want to forecast that actually backwards. Um, I'm going to have it do 40 so that it intersects the other line. And it does barely. I'm going to add a little more. Um, okay, so now I have my two lines. The other thing I need is I need to see my equations. So I have my y equals mx plus b equation for my freezing curve. And then I need my equation for my cooling curve. There it is. Okay, whoops, don't do that. Okay, uh, so now I have my two equations and I have my graph. Um, the next thing that I would do if I were you before I moved on, because we're gonna have to solve this system algebraically, is um, kind of just give it a look over and see what seems to be the point of intersection. So I'm looking for something roughly, I don't know, maybe like 23 is my X coordinate and seven and a half ish as my Y coordinate. I'm gonna write that down. So just because um, you know, I can check my algebra by comparing it to what I see visually. So that intersection is the freezing point of my solution. I'm also gonna write down these equations real fast so I can show you how to solve them. So um, you're going to save this and you're going to upload your graph um, to LabFlow. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how you solve algebraically. So I'm going to switch to whiteboard. I'm going to pull out my calculator on the phone. So to solve a system of equations algebraically, um, you're going to set them equal to each other. So my two equations were y equals negative 0.7097x plus 23.827. And I'm going to set it equal to the other portion of the equation. Um, so my other one was y equals negative 0.05x plus 8.8. So those are my two equations. Um, now I want to get the x's on the same side and uh, the numbers on the opposite side so I can solve for x. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to add... 0.7097x, so that I'm moving the x's over to the right-hand side of the equation. And pardon me while I type this into my calculator. That's going to give us 
is equal to 0.6597x plus 8.8. .8. Um, now, in order to get rid of my numbers on the right-hand side, I'm going to subtract 8.8. .8. And that gives me 15.027 is equal to 0.6597x. Sorry, I erase Oops. stuff I wrote with my hands on accident. Okay. Uh, and lastly, in order to solve for x, I need to divide. And that gives me 22.78 is equal to x. Now, my earlier estimate was 23 for x, so I'm definitely um, heading in the right direction. So um, now, just to find our y coordinate, I can take um, the x value that we just solved for and plug it into either one of the equations. I'm going to do the one that had fewer numbers. So y is equal to negative 0 0.05 times our x value plus 8.8. I'm going to multiply that out real fast. And that gave me y was equal to 7.661. So my earlier estimate was 23, 7.5. Um, what I'm ending up with as my xy coordinate is 22.78, 7.661. So that's really close. Therefore, I feel pretty confident that I did my algebra correctly. Um, so the next thing that you have to think about is what does this information actually mean? So the x coordinate is equal to the time of freezing. The y coordinate is the actual freezing point. So the temperature at which the freezing um, for the solution began. Um, so that's really all you need to do. You're going to do that for the solution and for the pure solvent. Um, and I think that's all you need to know.